Good morning, my dear students. Welcome to our Solange online class. Hope you all studied the last uh, class question. Okay, so in the last class, we studied about the digestion in buccal cavity and digestion in the stomach. Okay, so already I told you maximum the food materials are digested inside the buccal cavity and some amount of food materials are digested inside the stomach and the maximum, okay, the major food molecules are digested inside the small intestine. Okay, so buccal cavity, stomach and small intestine. These three areas are acting as the site for the digestion. Okay, so in these areas only maximum food materials are digested. Okay, so hope you have studied about this uh, digestion buccal cavity and digestion in uh, stomach. Okay, dear students, today we are going to study about one very important five more question, digestion in small intestine. Okay, digestion small is a very big question and it is very very important five more question. And in this topic, we are going to study about some important enzymes and their functions. Okay, so many enzymes are involved in the digestion in small intestine. Okay, so now we are going to study about all the names of the enzymes and how these enzymes are doing their functions inside the small intestine. Okay, so dear friends, listen very carefully. Again, I am telling you this is very important. Five more question. Okay, so digestion in small intestine. Actually, the bile is secreted by the liver. Okay, bile is secreted by the liver. The pancreatic juice is secreted by the pancreas and the intestinal juice is secreted by the intestine. Okay, so bile, pancreatic juice and intestinal juice, these three secretions are directly released inside the small intestine. Okay, directly released inside the small intestine. So the substance present in the bile, pancreatic juice and intestinal juice only helps the digestion process. Okay, so these substances present, so substance present in these secretions help us to easy digestion. Understand a few? Okay, serious ones. Then, next point about this digestion is point the same is the same. The already we have studied the wall of the alimentary canal. Okay, it is made up of four layers. Okay, so here muscularis is the second layer. The first layer is called serosa layer, second layer is called muscularis, third layer is called mucosa, and the inner layer is called mucous membrane. Okay, so these are the four important membranes or layers present in the wall of the alimentary canal. Here, the muscularis layer playing a very important role in the digestion in small intestine. Because the movement of this muscularis layer is very very important to mix the food materials with these substances. Okay, so the food materials are mixed with the bile, food materials are mixed with the pancreatic juice, food materials are mixed with this intestinal juice because of the movement of the muscularis layer of the small intestine. Understand like you? Understand? Finally, this movement facilitate or increase the absorption process or digestion process, not absorption, digestion process. Understand like you? So, dear students, now we have completed two points about this topic and the third point, say, already told you the bile, pancreatic juice, intestinal juice. These three substances are directly released inside the small intestine. Okay? So, okay, now we are going to study about the components and the enzymes of the bile. Okay, so the bile contains many components, for example, bile pigments, salt, cholesterol, and phospholipid. So these are the some of the components present in the bile. Okay, bile pigments, bile salt, cholesterol, and phospholipid. These are the substances present in the bile. Here there are two types of bile pigments are present in the bile. There are two types of pigments are present in the bile. One is called bilirubin and the second is called bilirubin. These two are produced when the hemoglobin molecules are destroyed in the aged RPC. Actually, the lifespan of the RPC red blood cells is maximum 120 days. Okay, so after 120 days, automatically this RPC is break down. When this RPC is break down, the hemoglobin molecules are also automatically broken. So, these hemoglobin molecules are releasing these two pigments. Okay, so the bilirubin and biliridin, these are the bile pigments present in the bile, but they are the product of the breakdown of hemoglobin molecule. Okay, they are the breakdown product of hemoglobin molecule. Understand of you? So, bile pigment, bile salt, cholesterol, and phospholipids are the substances present in the bile. So, hope you are understood this point. Then, next point. See, the functions of this bile salt. 
okay why is it convert the large fat molecules into small fat molecules okay so the large fat molecules present in cellular in the ingested food materials is broken or converted into small fat molecules with the help of the bile salts okay and second function of this bile bile is the bile activate the lipase lipase is one of the very important enzyme okay so lipase is activated by the bile and because this lipase is used to digest the lipid proteins okay so it is to digest the lipid protein understand of you so here one more question is here the enzyme lipase is activated by dash okay bile only activate the lipase enzyme understand of you so dear friends now we have completed about the bile then next we are going to study about the second substance pancreatic juice okay pancreatic juice okay like bile the pancreatic juice also consists of many substances and many enzymes for example citrullinogen hydrotrypsinogen carboxypeptidase pancreatic amylase pancreatic lipase and nuclease these are the some of the very important enzymes present in the pancreatic juice okay so let's say repeat all the enzymes present in this pancreatic juice trypsinogen hydrotrypsinogen carboxypeptidase pancreatic amylase pancreatic lipase and nuclease so these are the enzymes of the pancreatic juice Understand of you? Understand that the intestinal mucus are secreting one very important enzyme. Name of that enzyme is called enterokinase. Okay, this enterokinase enzyme only converting the trypsinogen into trypsin. Okay, actually this trypsinogen is a in inactive condition. Okay, it's a precursor enzyme. This trypsinogen is converted into trypsin with the help of this enterokinase, and this enterokinase is secreted by the intestinal mucus. Let's have a few. Then next, the trypsin functions of this trypsin. Trypsin convert the protein into polypeptides and peptides. The functions of the enzyme trypsin is converting the proteins into polypeptides and peptides. Let's have a few. Let us have the chymotrypsin is very very important enzyme present in this pancreatic juice. This chymotrypsin hydrolyzes the peptide bonds associated with the amino acid molecules. Okay, so amino acid molecules are connected with connected with each other by a bond. This bond name is called peptide bond. Okay, so this peptide bond present in this amino acid molecules are hydrolyzed by what can say hemotrypsin. Hemotrypsin. Understand, my dear friends? So now we completed in the pancreatic juice. Now we completed the endocrinase enzyme, trypsin enzyme, and the hemotrypsin enzyme functions. Okay, then now we are going to study about the remaining enzymes. Say. pancreatic amylase the function of this pancreatic amylase is converting the glycogen into starch and maltose converting the glycogen into starch and maltose so dear friends already told you in this topic we are going to study about many enzymes and functions of the enzyme okay no other points are there okay so so this glycogen is converted into starch and maltose With the help of the enzyme pancreatic amylase, this pancreatic amylase is also present in the pancreatic juice. Okay, then next lipase. Lipase also present in the pancreatic juice. So this lipase converting the fat molecules into fatty acid and monoglyceride. Okay, so the fat molecules are converted into fatty acid and monoglyceride with the help of the enzyme lipase. With the help of the enzyme lipase. Okay, then. this monoglycerides are again hydrolyzed into fatty acid and glycerol fatty acid and glycerol hope you understood this point here the fat molecules are converted into free fatty acid and monoglycerides then the monoglycerides are again hydrolyzed into fatty acid and glycerol the side of you then next enzyme is called nuclease next enzyme is called nuclease so the nuclease is the enzyme present in the pancreatic juice this enzyme converting the nucleic acid into nucleotides and nucleosides nucleic acids are converted into nucleotides and nucleosides with the help of this enzyme nuclease as a rapid reference then the next important point is see the secretions of the vernal gland and the intestinal glands okay the secretion okay the fluid secreted from the vernal glands and the intestinal glands are called sucus endricus are called sucus endricus 
Understand, my dear students? So, dear students, now we have completed the enzymes present in the pancreatic cells. Okay? So, the enzyme and the substance present in the bile already we have completed, and now we have completed the enzymes present in the pancreatic juice. Understand, are you? Understand? Then, now we are going to study about some more enzymes names. Okay? Say, for example, maltase, sucrase, lactase, then peptidase, nucleotidase, nucleosidase. Lipase, okay, like that many enzymes functions now we are going to study. Listen very carefully, and this is very important for one mark question also. Okay, dear students. Okay, the first one, maltose. Okay, maltose is converted into glucose and glucose. Converted into two glucose molecules with the help of an enzyme called maltase. Okay, so maltase is the enzyme used to convert the maltose into glucose and glucose. And next, sucrose is converted into glucose and fructose with the help of the enzyme is called sucrase. Okay, so sucrase enzyme is used to convert the sucrose into glucose and fructose. Then next enzyme is called lactase. This lactase enzyme convert the lactose into glucose and galactose. Okay, so lactose is converted into glucose and galactose with the help of the enzyme called lactase. The help of the enzyme called lactase. Understand? Then next, dipeptides and tripeptides. So these two peptides are converted into amino acid with the help of that one enzyme. Name of that enzyme is called peptidase. So the peptidase enzyme function is converting dipeptide and tripeptides into amino acids. Then next nucleotidase. Next enzyme name is called nucleotidase. This nucleotidase converts the nucleotide into phosphoric acid and nucleoside. Okay, nucleotidase is convert the nucleotide into phosphoric acid and nucleoside. That's all of you. Then next enzyme is nucleosidase. Nucleosidase. This enzyme converts the nucleoside into sugar and nitrogen base. So the sugar molecules are converted. The nucleoside molecules are converted into sugar and nitrogen base. The help of nucleosidase enzyme. Understand? Then next, the last enzyme is lipase. Lipase enzyme converts the diglyceride and monoglyceride into fatty acid and glycerol. Okay, so the diglyceride and monoglycerides are converted into fatty acid and glycerol with the help of the enzyme lipase. Understand, my dear students? So now we have studied about different types of enzyme. Okay, many enzymes names have I told you, and I explained the functions of all these enzymes. Understand, of you? Understand? Then next points: the mucus and the bicarbonate present in the intestinal tubes. Is providing the alkaline medium for the activity of enzymes. Okay, so for the effective functions of the enzymes, the enzymes need a alkaline medium. That alkaline medium is given by the mucus and bicarbonate present in the intestinal tubes. Understand, my dear students? Understand? Then the next point is say, on the at the end of the digestion process. All the macro molecules, okay, large sized molecules are converted into simple molecules or very small molecules. Okay, large sized macro molecules or the macro molecules are converted into simple molecules. These simple molecules will be absorbed by the cells. So, for example, um, carbohydrates. These carbohydrates are converted into monosaccharides. Carbohydrates are converted into monosaccharides. Proteins are converted into amino acids. Proteins are converted into, and so protein is the example for the large molecule. This molecule, large molecule, is converted into very small molecules. The name of this small molecule is called amino acid. Okay. Then uh, it's the next example, lipid. Okay. Lipids are converted into fatty acid and glycerol. Okay. Like that, all the large sized molecules, big sized molecules, or the macro molecules are converted into very simple or small molecules. Then only the organs can easily absorb their food materials. Understand a few? So hope you all understood all these points. Okay. Then see all the simple substances. Okay. At the end of the digestion process, what are the simple substances present in the small intestine? Every simple substance are absorbed by the duodenum and ileum region of the small intestine. 
okay so maximum the absorption process is takes place in the jejunum and ileum region of the small intestine you all know that the small intestine is divided into three regions first region is called u shaped duodenum the next one is called jejunum and the third region is called ileum okay so here the simple food substances are absorbed inside the jejunum and ileum region of the small intestine so hope you are understood this point also okay then the next point we say some hormones and nerves also controlling the coordination between different organs of our digestive system you all know our digestive system is a very developed complex system it is made up of large number of organs okay but there is a coordination is present in between the organs of our digestive system this coordination is controlled or regulated by some nerves and hormones nerves and hormones understand a few moreover some local hormones also produced inside the intestine okay local hormones also produced inside this sense inside the intestine and these hormones also controlling the secretions of the digestive system okay so local hormones also produced inside the digestive system these hormones controlling the secretion of the digestive juice understand a few understand so dear students now we have completed one very very important five mark question digestion in small intestine many one mark questions are there okay many one mark questions are there and many enzymes names and their functions also there okay so study today itself try to complete this question so again i am telling you it's a very very important five mark question digestion in small intestine okay so we will meet in the next class thank you